Are you an investigative professional? Have you heard about the investigatorstoolbox.com? Check out this exclusive online community for networking, learning, and data resource management. The Toolbox is a one-stop shop for all your investigative needs. Check out our robust collection of forums, our comprehensive learning page, and our expansive library of OSINT research tools. We've just released an app for both iOS and Android, so you can access the site seamlessly right off your phone. We have also partnered with some amazing companies like Crosstracks, Delpoint, IRB, ScopeNow, the Hetherington Group, PI Magazine, PI Gear, Merlin Locate Services, Parabin, the PI Institute of Education, and so many more. They're offering over $1,250 worth of discounts and benefits exclusively to community members today. Use code PIP201836 and save 10% on your membership. That's www.investigators-toolbox.com. Crosstracks case management system. That is what we are talking about today. Are you using a case management system? What are you waiting for? If you don't use a case management system, you really need to look into implementing that into your business regimen. I've been at it with Crosstracks now a little over a year, and it's just been a game changer for my business. They are SOC 2 certified, SOC 2 Type 2 certified. If you don't know what that means, it means that they're encryption system is second to none and you have to go through a whole screening process to figure out uh, if you can even qualify for that and they have so you know with certainty your data is being protected i don't think there's another case management system out there that offers that same ability to have the SOC 2 type 2 certification as you guys know i've been uh, you know singing the praises of cross tracks and uh, i really believe in this product and i believe you should check it out Contact Brad, contact Pat, uh, one of the team members over there, and see if it's right for you. Cross Tracks Case Management System, check it out today. Welcome to PI Perspectives and Happy Memorial Day. We hope you have the opportunity to spend some downtime with family and to reflect on this great country of ours. Today, we welcome Kevin McLean. Kevin runs Kevin W. McLean Investigations. He's also the creator of Ready Response an investigator app network for insurance investigations nationally. We're going to learn about some of its great features and how you can grow your business by being a part of it. So let's welcome Kevin McLean and your host, private investigator, Matt Spare. And welcome everybody to this week's episode of PI Perspectives. Before I introduce my guest today, I just wanted to give a special acknowledgement and a thank you to Jim and Nicole over at PI Magazine. Um, I got this little, uh, little doodad here. If you're uh, watching on YouTube, you can see it. If you're uh, listening to the podcast, you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, but it's a, it's an award presented to me for recognition as a continued top writer and contributor to PI Magazine. Uh, most folks know that I, I write columns uh, every issue for them, uh, both on podcasting and um, on investigators' perspectives on, uh, on, on doing business. So uh, I love doing it. I love Jim and Nicole. The magazine is amazing. If you folks don't subscribe to it, please go out and subscribe to it. Um, it it's a great, great, uh, it's, a, it's like a must have in, in our industry. If you're doing investigative work, you should be uh, subscribing to PI Magazine. So uh, thank you to Jim and Nicole. I'm honored to receive that award and I'm definitely motivated now to continue writing and to keep doing stuff. So uh, without further ado though, I would like to introduce my guest today. Um, we've got Kevin McLean here. Um, Kevin is kind of a jack of all trades uh, investigator who's had an amazing career. Uh, wow, well, he's been in business since 1993 and I first heard him on Paul Jabe's podcast uh, many, many years ago. And uh, I, I want to welcome you, Kevin, to the program. How are you? Good morning, man. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Um, as we're recording this, uh, it'll be airing on Memorial Day. So I just want to say happy Memorial Day to everybody. And I hope you're eating hamburgers and uh, remembering this great country and the folks that have, have served in this country. So, um, so tell me a little bit about your background, your business. How did you get into it? And uh, what has brought you up to this point? Uh, it's a very storied career, let me tell you what. Uh, prior to going into legal investigations, I was in management for many, many years. I, uh, a lot of my time was as a general sales manager and new business development manager in the radio industry. Yeah. I also hosted uh, numerous morning radio shows. I was a, uh, a DJ in nightclubs, ended up owning nightclubs. And then I decided what I want to be when I grow up. So after about 20 years of doing that, I sold out all my business, 
went back to school, wanted to become an attorney because I had a degree in criminal justice. And I said, I want to become an attorney. Wow. And got involved in doing an um, uh, internship as a legal investigator. And I fell in love with it, Matt. It's like, oh my God, this is perfect for me. I love James Bond. I love Sherlock Holmes since I was a kid. You know, matter of fact, in my office, there's a picture of me, five years old, in a fedora and a trench coat. Okay. There you go. Are you a uh, are you a Hardy Boys uh, kind of guy or no? Oh, big time! I, I've got all the Hardy Boys series, the Hardy Boys Detective Handbook, yeah. uh, Brains Benton, yeah. Encyclopedia Brown. Yeah. You know all those different ones. I was uh, in all that stuff. You know, I was I was totally into Nancy Drew too. I must confess. <laughs> there you go. Hey, hey, Nancy's pretty hot back then, you know. <laughs> and Scooby Doo. I mean, who who didn't love Scooby Doo, right? <laughs> right. That's right? Old man Jenkins. You always know he did, he did it. <laughs> always knew he would have did it, right? Right. He had a mask on apparently. <laughs> but, uh, so uh, I started in '93 after an internship. Uh, yeah. I got an opportunity to go to work for a full service law firm. And uh, what I mean by that is they had eight different attorneys in the firm. Uh, they did personal injury. They did workers' comp. They did corporate. They did nonprofit work, health work, estates, probates, uh, divorce. You name it, anything they did, okay? The big uh, <clears throat> problem I had at that time, back in 1993, was most investigators that did the kind of work we do now, more or less were like what they would call ambulance chasers. They, they really tracked down cases and they signed up people. It was a process to educate attorneys how you could help them in all these different fields and stuff like that. But right. you talk about the ultimate law school I went to. Uh, every day, Matt, I was in a conference room with a different attorney on a different type of case. They even had their own internal library. So the senior partner, I would go up and pitch different thoughts or theories or things about the cases. You know what they tell me to do? Right. He said, go research it. Okay. So, so, so we're going to, we're going to, you know? <laughs> we're going to segue here. So, so I have the exact same background, not wow. for, not for a big law firm. Mm -hmm. I worked for a smaller uh, firm, but it was a personal injury firm and the same thing. And, um, and then as I got into the business, my business is, is attorneys. So I became friendly with, uh, with an attorney and he comes to me one day, he said, listen, I'm going to show you something that's going to change your world. And it's going to get you tons of business. I'm like, okay, I'm all here. So let's talk. Sure. It was pattern jury uh, instructions. You know, understand what pattern jury, jury instructions are when you're taking witness statements. I'm like, okay, what does that mean? Is go read it and you'll understand what the liability requirements are for a jury to, you know, if, if it meets these requirements, they have to find in your favor. That's basically dumbing it down what it means, right? So yeah. he goes, if you can tie in those elements and taking a statement into, you know, uh, tie in those elements into your statement. And, and there's no way a jury cannot find in the favor for your client. And I was like, that's genius. Right. So sure. same thing, having access to the, that library, working with attorneys, um, and having a good, good attorney like that. So, you know, working for somebody like that, that's somebody taking an interest in having you being better at your job. And it made you better at what you did. So yeah, that's great, man. So it's, it's so funny as you're talking about this. I'm like, yep, preaching to the choir, buddy. <laughs> I've done that. It's, like, it's so from that, because, you know, doing good work for them, yeah. the word of mouth referrals, you know, which is always your best form of you know, marketing anyway, is getting referrals. Sure. That's how my business started growing. You know, uh, I'd also like to tell your, your, your audience that where I'm broadcasting from right now is my hometown. My hometown is a population. Are you ready for this? of 1200 people okay right. this is my hometown but this is where I, I built my business from you know going on 27 years now and we cover the midwest we've got numerous investigators all over the midwest yeah. plus new cases nationwide doing consulting and different things like that but it started from very humble beginnings as this little boy from illinois who had a dream and a vision and just uh you know believe you know. so was that big law firm in that small town or no it's still there. I still do work for them. Yeah. yeah. Matter of fact, I, I've taken my nephews because I got my nephews work for me and stuff like that. I've shown them my old office. <laughs> it's like back in a corner in a cave. <laughs> that was my office. I felt so proud of that office. Like, dude, so, we're all again. So my office in the attorney's office, one, one of his, he moved a couple of times, but one of my office was literally an expanded closet. <laughs> and I was next to the copy machine. <laughs> I'm right there with you, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, you know, I was so proud of that, you know. Yeah. And, and 
you know, because the upcoming NALI conference is coming up, NALI was my first association I ever joined. And I was so proud of my certificate back in 1995 when I joined. It's and a was, National uh, Association of Legal Investigators, now. Yeah. Yep. And I, I still remember my first conference in Portland, Oregon. It yeah. all stuck with me. Uh, they had like a what it was called a workshop where they had uh, a role play, had an investigator. They had the, the basically the police officer and the witness and everybody and showed you how to do it. And amazing. After all these years, I still remember that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I still remember it's like dinner theater. <laughs> like, 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 oh. One of the people up there on the stage. I still remember all that stuff. Yeah. And it just, you know, it, it stuck with me. But that's where I started getting my my beginnings is going to these conferences and, and educating myself along the way and, and doing the networking, which is yeah. so critical, which I gotta throw a shout out to your product, you know, investigators toolbox, because it, it to me is one of the ultimate tools now that we need to put in our tool belts. Yeah. And like I mentioned to you before. I said the the OSINT resources alone was worth the, the price of admission to me because the amount of time it saved me from having to do the research to find those different tools, plus you're always adding new ones. Yeah. That's invaluable. That's invaluable. You know, and you take that out to your clients, you look like a rock star. Yeah. You know, and they're like, where'd you find this at? Hey, <laughs> you don't tell me to tell you how, how I found it, just that I found it, okay? <laughs> Thank but you. I just got, I had to throw that shout out to you because that, yeah. that's phenomenal what you've done. The check is in the mail. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> I appreciate that. A little shameless plug there, right? right. <laughs> a little payola, right? right. <laughs> Let's keep right. it old school. <laughs> exactly. But that's where I got my, my, my beginnings at. I worked yeah. there in house for 10 years and started in, you know, like I said, I started doing work for public defenders and criminal defense work back in 1996. Yeah. And it was just an educational process from there of how to educate attorneys, how you could help them do their cases. Yeah. And, you know, we were talking offline before we started here. And I, and I told you, like, I feel like where you are in your career, you're a couple of years ahead of me. And literally, like, if you're starting in the mid 90s, I started in 2001, right? So it's <laughs> kind of really close, man. It's so, uh, yeah. so interesting to see the trajectory. Um, yeah. So, uh, I, I too work from home sometimes, most of the time, but I can't leave New York City. I just love it so much. So I'm getting my car and drive, you know, an hour, an hour and a half just just to be in the city some days because I just love it so much. Uh, our, our drives last, well, like I say, we cover uh, from Kansas City to Chicago to Indianapolis down to Lexington, Kentucky. I mean, that's our perimeter that we handle on a regular basis. So five hour drives are. A common thing for us yeah you know, that's just, that's what's good you gotta go where the market is yeah. you know for what we do and stuff like that definitely so before we take the break and we're gonna, we're gonna jump out in just a bit i do want to mention we had talked about nally and nally has this conference coming up in san antonio uh next month uh please sign up if you haven't uh it's going to be an amazing event you're actually speaking at yeah. the uh at the event what are you speaking on over there it's going to be basically on uh you know interview techniques for investigators but I'm expanding upon this, Matt, because what I'm going to do, because I know there's a lot of seasoned professionals, you know, going to be out there and they're already going to, they know how to do you know, interviews and stuff like that. But what I want to take it to is showing an actual case study from a case I did from 1977. Wow. Okay. And this case had been through various different silk stocking law firms, pro bono attorneys, innocence projects, all these different groups have looked at it, have studied this case. And every one of them, I hate to admit it, but every one of them made an assumption. Right. It took until the time I got involved in the case, and I'll explain to them, you know, at the conference, how we did all this to put it together, how I did not make an assumption on some specific facts, and it flipped it, was able to get an affidavit, and based upon that affidavit, the judge allowed us to get DNA testing. Well, it had been that long that this, this man had been fighting to get DNA testing. And that happened, I was able to get almost a 95% recantation from this one witness. Wow. So it's, so it's gonna bring it together, I think, uh, as far as to have everybody look at the case to start with, then we'll go through you know, my methodology of approaching doing interviews and, and things like that, and then go That's back great. to the case and say, okay, let's, let's brainstorm this case together. Yeah. And I'll show them, here's what we ended up doing. Yeah, and that's the interesting thing about witness statements, right? Every investigator has their own technique and their own way of doing things. I learned so much from John Hoda, um, 
you know, yeah, he's got a video on, on, on taking statements and it, it's, it's a little dated, but it's been refreshed to include zoom now. So John went back and he added a little bit more. Um, and that lives on the toolbox too. So if you're a toolbox subscriber, please make sure you check out that video. It's free. John charges $70, um, to, for the video, but if you're a member, you you actually get it for free, which is pretty neat. Um, so again, you know, everybody's got their own techniques and I learn stuff from John, you know, like taking your statement and then closing your book and asking further questions, you know? So psychologically, the person thinks they're finished. Now they're a little more relaxed. They're going to give you a little more info. And if like, you got to go back and amend something, go back and amend something, it, you know, like that little, those little tricks are just things yeah. you don't think about. And yes, we're Nally and, you know, we all have tons of years of experience, but you know what? An old dog can always learn a new trick. <laughs> you know? I'm that way. You know, I, I still go to conferences. I'm a big proponent on continuing education yeah. and, and going to conferences and being part of associations and, and the networking components because yeah. to keep our profession alive and professional, I think that's that's critical for us. And, and people like John Boda and yourself yeah. and Kevin Riddle and other people in the industry are keeping that profession alive and educating people. Here's the proper ways. Yeah. Yeah, even, you know, folks like Kitty Haley, too, you know, we start talking about ethics and, and things like this is necessary. You know, these are these are the folks that are taking interest. Uh, you know, you've been in the business since 1993. You know, you can still continue to do what you do. You can be in your 12,000 person town and, and, and you know, keep keep it moving and nobody would ever know. Right. right. But you, right. you're like, you know what? I need to share with the next generation on how to do this stuff. Like that's game changer. That's, I mean, that's legacy. When when it comes to like, for me personally, that's what I want to be remembered for. I want to be remembered for the guy who knows everybody. Yes. And, you know, like the guy who, who, who teaches also, you know, that, that'll, you know, put, put forward and not saying like, this is my secret way of doing things and I'm not going to tell anybody how to do it. Like that behavior is so long gone now. Now it's time right. to give back. Right. Uh, um, you know, pay it forward, you know, and like say, Everywhere I teach and train at around the country, I always you know, preface it by like, this is my new band of brothers and sisters. Yeah. Here's my email address. If you ever need any help or anything like that? Yeah. When, when COVID happened, um, it was devastating to all of us everywhere. Yeah. And I was trying to think of ways, not just for myself to try to survive and things like that, but how can I help my fellow you know, brothers and sisters out there in the investigative world? And so one of the things I put out there, uh, I put out one of my most requested PowerPoint presentations which was dealing with open records and yeah. how to obtain open records because you can do that from your home. And that's what I thought about. They could do that from their home and still offer services to their clients without having to go out into the field. So I just put it out there. Yeah. I, it's just like, look, I want to do my part to contribute in any way I can because that's just what it's all about. Yeah. I mean, listen, the 2020 keyword there was pivot and you know, everybody had a pivot. If you didn't pivot, we're probably not chatting right now because you're probably out of business, you know? Yeah. Um, so we are going to take a break now, but before we do that, I have one question for you. Um, during your radio career, were you a solo guy or did you have a sidekick? You know, I always had a sidekick. Yeah. We always had a side. I bring in different sidekicks though. Okay. At different times, you know, but usually it was like, but the last show I did was like, uh, you know, the morning flight, you know, that was the name of our, program you know so you had a pilot and a co-pilot oh yeah they were taking off you know <laughs> and uh yeah so uh it, it's amazing because i still see people to this day and see my middle name when i did radio was i didn't go by kevin mm -hmm. it was my original radio show we did my partner's name was kevin oh yeah so we couldn't have the kevin and kevin show so i went by my middle name which is perfect it's Wayne, Wayne McLean, X95 Radio. There you go. <laughs> you got the golden pipes. <laughs> so, there you go. So that's what it went by. So people still to this day call me Wayne. And yeah. people say, well, where's Wayne at? And I say, well, he's down in Aruba. He's hanging out. He's like, I have a twin. <laughs> you got the golden pipes, man. This is uh, this is worth the, the price of admission here. I feel like I should just end the show right now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool uh so i promise everyone we will be right back we're gonna take a, uh, a, a quick break here uh sit tight guys uh because when we come back we're going to talk about ready response uh which is this amazing app that i first heard about years ago on paul jabe's uh show and uh you've, you've been developing it and you have a major major announcement that you're going to have today which i think is 
Awesome. Uh, so everybody sit tight. Uh, this is the, uh, the cliffhanger here. We'll be back with the, uh, with the major am- announcement from Kevin. So sit tight, everyone. I want to talk to everybody today about scopenow.com. Scopenow has been a big time sponsor of this program for quite some time. And I just love their service. I've been using them since the beginning. I'm one of their beta customers and uh, it's been so awesome to see them grow into the business that they are today and just how they just keep reinventing themselves and pushing themselves to get more and more information. What it comes down to is is Scope Now is a tool that you definitely need to use if you do social media investigations, any internet research, and really spending less time digging around and and, uh, looking for information. I think it's one of the best points of how Scope Now can help you. Their AI platform, their analytics are amazing. You really get an idea of what you need. You're reducing the time, you're reducing the manpower that you're spending on doing this research because they're essentially doing it for you and uh, they're doing it correctly, which is most important. One of the new things that they're actually offering is this flagging system where you can flag behaviors and really highlight and um, look out for fraud. If you're doing a lot of fraud research, uh, this is a fantastic tool and you can set up alerts. So you have uh, particular people that you're looking at, you can actually set up alerts to get notifications when the criteria that you set up is actually um, is flagged and goes off. It's really, uh, really amazing. And their relationship and association analytics are uh, top notch, really uh, cutting edge and really, really cool. When they brought that out on version three, it was a game changer. I mean, really being able to see how people interact together and, and uh, you know having that relationship you know, analysis is really, really something that's cool. You know, one of the other things about being involved with Scope Now is their ability to offer webinars. Their team is cutting edge on putting together and getting out really, really great content. If you're a member of Scope Now, if you know who they are, you've seen them around on LinkedIn, you'll you'll know that they're constantly doing webinars on these new websites that are coming out and uh, they're, they're really staying on top of it. And don't forget, uh, any reports that you generate, you can actually white label those reports put your own logos on and, and really make them look professional, which you know could equate to more billing for you as well. So check them out today. It's uh, www.scopenow.com. They're a great, great company. They should be one of the tools in your toolbox along with whatever kind of uh, search engines you do. Uh, you need to make sure that Scopenow is a part of that suite. Scopenow.com. Are you overwhelmed with your current case load? Could you use some help with your skip trace assignments? With Merlin Locate Services, rather than adding staff, you can add an entire skip trace department of licensed private investigators who specialize in skip tracing. Check out MerlinLocate.com today. When you work with Merlin Locate Services, you bring on a valuable experience and trusted extension to your team. Check out the PI Institute of Education at PIInstitute.com. Since 1989, Kelly Riddle has been teaching on subjects such as surveillance, nursing home investigations, insurance fraud, domestic investigations, hidden assets, and accident scene investigations. The PI Institute of Education is a featured learning partner in the investigatorstoolbox.com. So check out the free content on the site, then visit the Institute for more great savings on additional classes. We're less than a month away from the Nali Conference in San Antonio, Texas. It's not too late to register, you know. Both Kevin and Matt will be teaching at this event. Get more info today at Nally.com. And welcome everybody back to PI Perspectives. This is Matt Sperry, your host. Uh, today we are honored to have Kevin McLean here with us. Kevin, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it very much. Very honored. I if, I sh- if I should call you Wayne or Kevin, I don't know. <laughs> call me Jay, Jay Ray, whatever you'd like. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh, before we uh, took a break, uh, I teased a little bit about Ready Response and uh, you know, what that project is. And uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about what it is, how you came up with the idea and the whole development process? Uh, Because I think it really is a neat thing that you've done. Sure, sure. Um, Okay, so Ready Response uh, is basically, it is a patented, which is really big, it's a patented uh, technology platform, mobile app that connects investigators nationwide through the mobile app 
technology. If you can imagine Uber for PIs in a way, and we'll kind of go into that a little bit more specific here in a little bit, but how it evolved was about seven years ago, <clears throat> I went to Los Angeles to a big marketing conference out there, learning more about how to market your business and things like that. And I ran across this company that had built an app. Well, at that time, I always thought apps were games. I was like everybody else, it, it, this game, right. right? And it was an app that actually was able to quote insurance uh, for yachts. Uh, they would take a picture uh, of the yacht, send it back to the, you know, to the main office, and within seconds, boom, they're spitting back out a quote. And I thought, that's pretty cool. So I started, my brain started whirling here, like, wait a second, take pictures, send back, you know. And so I started studying this more. And I got back home and I, I bought a book called Building the Billion Dollar App. And it was an entire, uh, basically historical about the app that was built over in England called Halo. Halo was uh, prior to Uber coming on board. It was a ride sharing app for taxis and how they built that. And the concept was, you know, about, you know, drivers and of course, the, you know, passengers and connecting the two together through this app technology. And I thought, okay, this is very similar. What if we could take professional investigators, put them into uh, basically a mobile app where they're all connected nationwide, okay? where then whenever our clients have needs that they could tap the app and it reaches out to a certain geofenced area and those investigators within that geofence, someone can accept the assignment, go out there, do their investigative work and create the report right from the scene and submit that report into the client within a matter of hours. That's where the whole concept came to be to develop ready response. Ready is an acronym. Ready stands for R, react to emergencies, E, and accidents by detectives with an investigative response. Ready, response. You got to think about investigators. We get calls all the time about all kinds of different situations and circumstances that right. come up. And so <clears throat> as it evolved through a seven-year project, okay, when I say by seven years is when you get into developing a mobile app, Call me first, okay? <laughs> because I've been through five different app developers. Yeah. You, know, you hear the old adage about uh, oversell, under deliver. Uh, I could write a book on all yeah. this. That's okay. But, but we've now are rolled out. We are rolled out. We're official. Ready response is now out there, getting ready to roll out in a in a big big way. Right now, Matt, we've probably got around about five hundred investigators connected with us nationwide okay that uh, can respond whenever incidents or accidents happen and things of that nature we're still looking for more investigators and i'll tell you why here in a second so right. we need as many as we can get when you talk about paying it forward the, the vision i always had about ready response is trying to create opportunities for every investigators out there that's professional i'm not looking for uh, you know a big amount of people i want quality people but professional investigators who like Myself or you, I can never compete with the big boys, okay? Because I don't have that span, that maximum, like these nationwide surveillance companies and all this other stuff. But right. what I can do is bring a highly qualified product and professionalism to these clients and take even the independent investigator who doesn't have a big agency, who never would get a call from a major insurance provider, but because they're on our platform, all of a sudden they get those calls. Right. Because we've created something that no one else in the industry has ever created before. The other part of ready response is I want to pay maximum pricing to the investigators. What I mean by that, you know, how you get calls and they'll say, hey, can you do it for this amount? Can you do it for that amount? That's calls. Oh, man, dude, in New York, it's crazy. Yeah. Because they I don't understand it's it's New York. So I'll get New calls carrier, like, oh, we need this surveillance done. And by the way, you know, we're going to, we can only pay $55 an hour and yeah. they need it like this evening. Yes. <laughs> like, And I said, no, I'm in and out. When I originally rolled this out, I did put it into a box because that's a, our mindset was always like that. I said, yeah. why should I cut the quality, you know, and, and cut these people's hourly rates when I, I want to get quality and my clients will pay for that quality professionalism. Yeah. You know, they'll be able to will respond when you need them to respond. 
I said, you tell me what your your your, your preferred subcontractor rate is. And I know most what most rates are around the country now. And if it's within reason, okay, that's what I'm going to pay you. Right. I'm not going to haggle with you. All I want to know is a guarantee from you and your agency. You'll respond when we need you to respond. That's yeah. it. I'm going to pay you from portal to portal. I'm going to pay you for report time. I'm going to pay you for mileage. People don't do that in our industry that yeah. sub out things in these nationwide companies. I want to be different than all of them. I want this to be something. It's a win-win. Yeah. In other words, it, it's the bottom line is for our clients that they get a highly skilled professional investigator that's qualified, understands about evidentiary issues, understands about they have to testify or go to a deposition or whatever. They're skilled at that. And more importantly than that, Matt, that they're going to be here six months from now. They're not going to be in these rotating cycles of a lot of these companies, the nationwide companies that have somebody for six months and they're gone and we got tracked down who did my work and stuff like that. So do you have like a screening process if somebody wants to join the network? Yes, yes. They can go to uh, readyresponse.com and up there it says join us. And then it walks them through. One of the things we require is we want to see your investigative reports. Redact them out and stuff, but we just want to see your investigative reports. I mean, I've seen people before that have submitted stuff in on legal <laughs> yellow <laughs> you know, pads and stuff like that. I'm going, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, so you want to have a quality. You want to also have them ascertain that they've not had any kind of, you know, issues within their, you know, licensing boards and, you know, things like that. So we want to, we have a vetting process. And early on when we started doing this, uh, I belong to numerous associations. You know, I'm a NALI member. Intellinet member, NCISS member, uh, INSPI member, uh, CDIPC. I, I believe in all these different associations and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. It, 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 it's, it's critical you know, on this. So early on, Intellinet got behind me on this entire venture. And what's nice about Intellinet, like a lot of associations, they have a vetting process. They have a minimum requirement of 10 years to be able to join and stuff like that. So when I go and I'm talking to risk managers, I'm talking to these major providers, of insurance, and and uh, even the independent uh, self-insured trucking companies, and I'm telling them about the skill sets we're bringing to the table, they're just like blown away because they're so used to, you know, getting this, okay, we don't know who we're getting this time around, and are they going to be here in six months or something like that? Do they really understand what they're doing? And that's the one thing I wanted to kind of change the narrative about how we approach it. I mean, we're still recovering from Trustify, right? Yes. Yeah. That that really set us back a bit, you know. And when you start talking about Uber and investigator, yep. everyone's like, <laughs> no, I, I totally agree with that. And uh, that was one of the things that I had to overcome. It, it was so scary because it almost the exact time that I was getting ready to roll out and I actually started my patent process right about the time that they came out with their product. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Everybody's going to have the same image of us with them. And we are nothing. We are nothing like them. I mean, we're dealing with the companies. We're dealing with the insurance companies. When I roll this out to you a little bit, this announcement, you're going to see why we are nothing like them whatsoever. Yeah. We have clients already. Okay. You will know who the clients are because you're going out doing the work. This isn't like we're hiding things from someone or something like that. Yeah. We have clients. But we have needs for investigators yep. you know, to do that. It's their license. It's not like we are marketing and all these groups and stuff like that. We're not doing anything like that. But I will say, if there's ever something in the, in the 50 states that we're required to do, we're going to do it. If I got to get a license in whatever state, just so I can do it professionally, we'll do it. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I want this to be something that is a win-win for yeah. Everybody out there. yeah. And you, you do hold licenses in several states. I'm looking yes. at Ohio. I think it's in five or six states, I think, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, that, that, that's what I'm going to say. I want this, you know, so when they understand what we're getting ready to do, mm-hmm. and uh, I'm teasing again with the, yeah, the yeah. Announcement. Are we doing this, sir? I feel like we need to take another break or something before <laughs> we do. <laughs> the radio, Wayne. I'm, we're I'm done here. Rolling it out here a little bit. But, <laughs> And keep in mind, this is our first target market. This isn't yeah. the final target. This isn't the final market because yeah. we've got a lot of other markets that have already been inquiring with us, but we're laser focused right now in this market base. And you'll understand why 
when I tell you right now what we're doing. Yeah, why don't you get into it? Let's break the news here. Okay, here's the news. Okay. During the COVID time, a lot of people were trying to figure out what to do, how to do it, and just trying to survive. What I did is I reevaluated what we were doing with ready response. And uh, we already had a lot of traction in the industry. We'd already been doing a lot of pitches to trucking companies, uh, risk management companies, things like that. I wanted to make it even bigger than what it was before because some of the people I talked to, they said, what if you could do this? What if you could take a dash cam, okay? And when that crash happens, that dash cam is recording that information, right? All that artificial intelligence is being recorded. And that information can then be sent to you, what they call an API, sent to you, where instantaneously, now you're getting that video clip, a little snippet, and all that intelligence, including the GPS location, where you can immediately start your investigation. What if you could do that? Right. Nobody's doing anything like that anywhere in the industry. Well, guess what? That's what we started working on during the COVID time. Right. Now, guess what? That is something that we can roll out. Because what we have done with Ready is we've now partnered up with an international insurance company that's going to be offering a usage-based insurance with an artificial intelligence company called Tangerine, who's got one of the most phenomenal dash cam you'll ever see in the market space, along with a ELD, ELD company called Simple ELD, along with a trucking uh, self-reporting trucking uh, accident app called Accident Plan, along with Ready Response. We've partnered all them together. So we're going to be offering a discounted insurance program, right. okay, and combining the technologies together. So it's going to be the only proactive, reactive approach in risk management for the transportation space. So that means the better these drivers drive, mm -hmm. the cheaper their insurance will be. But if they have needs of claims and stuff like that, we're going to be able to basically get out there in a lot more rapid manner than it's ever been done before because of all the technology we're bringing to the table. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you're talking four different types of technologies, you know, artificial intelligence. I mean, the whole nine yards, we're bringing it all together. Our target group that we're marketing out to within the next few weeks, uh, one of our clients has got uh, between, I should say a client, one of our partners has got between a million to 1.3 million users of their products already. In the These are drivers market. you're talking about, right? Yes. And that's where it's rolling out. Yeah. That's going to be our first big rollout to that market. So that's why I say about needing investigators, right. we will need investigators, not just for right. the, the accident investigation themselves, cargo theft, workers' comp, background investigations. You know, start thinking about that. You know, surveillance on the other side, if, you know, this person's claiming they're injured and they're actually not injured, you know, right. those type of things. So we're going to have, you know, needs where they just go out and locate and interview witnesses. They don't have to be an accident reconstructionist or anything like that. They just need to be able to go out and do that you know, initial investigation. How it works, <clears throat> Matt, is when that initial call comes out, we get that intelligence that comes in, we're getting that GPS location. We're getting all that intelligence and we're automatically starting what we call a rapid remote investigation. Mm -hmm. We're looking for posts, for comments, for tweets, for YouTube videos. We're right. grabbing that evidence. We're identifying those witnesses either by usernames, license plates, whatever it is. We grab that evidence. We capture that evidence and authenticate that evidence using proprietary software. So if it ever needs to be used in evidentiary purposes or to court, we'll already have it all captured. Right. Then based upon that information, <clears throat> now the client has the decision point to make. Do we want to activate a field investigator? If they want to activate a field investigator, all the ready investigators will have the abilities to be accessed by the apps, also by email, also by text, and also by phone. So we can reach them in multiple ways. So even if the cellular signals are down, we still have the abilities to reach out and get someone <clears throat> to a location. Yeah, that's, that's pretty neat. I, I know uh, when it comes to trucking accidents, that is a big, big market. I mean, there is, um, you know, guys make careers on that, that just doing that type of investigations. Attorneys make careers on it. I know plenty of attorneys that all they do is trucking litigation yes. on both sides. You know, I know some really good attorneys on both sides. Uh, and it, it's impressive the amount of money <laughs> that's there 
um, you know, just ask, you know, Tracy Morgan. I say it all the time. Ask Tracy about right. Him, right? Uh, I saw him at the Knicks game the other day. He looked pretty happy. <laughs> he was <Yeah>. okay. <laughs> sure. No, you're, you're absolutely right. That, you know, in statistics and studies, uh, there's either, either a serious body injury uh, accident or a, 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 you know, catastrophic death playing yeah. every 16 minutes in the trucking space. There's no bumps or bruises in that stuff, but, you know. Uh, no. And, no. And what's interesting is I have seen dash cam uh, videos on trucks that have uh, exonerated them. Yes. You know, somebody's claiming a particular thing happened in a certain way. It's like, uh, not really. <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> the truth shall set you free. This dash cam built by Tangerine, go tangerine.ai. I've never seen a dash cam with telematics like this has got. It yeah. is unbelievable, the information that it will bring back and you're right you know you know to me it's like the truth is the truth whether we're on this side or on that side we just want to get to the facts nobody can afford to have surprises they need to know if this person was responsible for this what happened then that company needs to pay up and move on and not litigate it out and cost all kinds of time and money and bad pr and everything else just you know. we always know how you're going to lose your case that's 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 a tagline for me right always always know right and right. right and i have uh you know i have, i really don't do defense work I'm, I'm more of a plaintiff guy but i've had the opportunity over the years to be in the room with a conversation with a defense firm and uh an adjuster and like the the, the, the head muckety mucks at one of the big insurance companies so i i had a couple of years ago got got in contact uh, did business with these guys because they contacted me they're like we hear you're the guy to help with this particular issue. And it was a shooting that was in a club in, in Queens, New York. Perfect. They needed boots on the ground and they needed specific uh, people with sp specific relationships to help them be able to do it. And I was like, yes, I can solve your problem. It's going to cost, you know, here's, I need a retainer. And they started laughing at me. We don't do retainers. Ha ha ha. I'm like, okay, well, good luck with your, with your problem. So right. <laughs> they call me back two weeks later. They're like, who do we make the checkout to? Right. So sure. not only did we burn through the retainer, but we, we did like another, I don't know, 2,500 or 3,000 on top of it. Uh, and they were extremely happy. But the reason I'm saying all this is, is that got me into a conversation because they wanted me to really be in the room to interject my findings when they're deciding, do we pay it? Or do we sit on it? And what are the risks of sitting on it? How is this going to affect our bottom line with our shareholders? Like the things that you would never think of. Right. But it's all part of the equation. And I'm like, this is horrific. I'm staying in plaintiff only. <laughs> like, sure. you know. no, there's a lot of different moving parts to it all. Yeah. And that, you know, we always talk about knowledge being power. Yeah. The more information they know, the quicker they know it, the better they can make, you know, the strategic decisions that they really need to make. It's just a question of like, hey, if we hold on for like another year, you know, that money be collecting interest, it'll be doing like we could use it for other things. We know we're going to have to pay this out eventually. But if we hold on longer, maybe they'll take less like that kind of stuff. Weird. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and I, I go back to the conversation we were having earlier before the break when we were talking about statements and, and you know, just having the ability to not have an opinion on things and really uh, our job as, as investigators to report the facts one way or any other, like being impartial about things. That's so, mm -hmm. so important in what we do. You can never take a vested interest in y your client, really. Uh, it, your vested interest should be in the truth of what happened. Uh, yes. because it's not always going to turn out the way they want it to turn out. Right. No, no. Um, and, and we know we're doing our job if we're uncovering actually what happens, not necessarily what they want to happen, or at least you got to be able to put it in a way that maybe there's a better chance they'll get a little bit more out of it, but they're not getting it. Right. And that is a soft skill. You can you either have it, or you don't, right? To being right. able to frame it that particular way. Yeah, um, we, we need to be impartial, objective, finders of facts. Yeah. Uh, simple as that. I mean, yeah. it's like, look, you got to know what what's out there. Yeah. You know, you don't have to have, you don't want somebody to tell you what you want to hear. You yeah. need to tell, tell them what you need to hear so you know what, how to make your next decision points yeah. on, on, on situations. That was a big lesson for me. When I started, um, uh, considering going to law school and, and going through that whole process, 
um, studying for, for the LSATs and understanding, you know, contrapositives and alternative uh, explanations for why things happened. You know, I was always a more, this is what it is. Here's my theory. I'm going to prove it. No, no, you have no. to, you have to consider all theories and yes. disprove all theories to get to the theory. Like I didn't think that way. Right. Yes. I was never open that way, but a good investigator will think that way. Consider everything rule and then rule it out. Right. That's the, the proper yeah. way of doing things. When, when, especially when you do a lot of criminal defense work, like I've done over the years. Yeah. yeah. You, 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 you got to look at it totally open. You can't just read the reports and say, that's all the facts. Yeah. Because you start making assumptions. That's where you get yourself in a lot of trouble. Not in this industry. An assumption will kill you. You can't. Uh, you can't do it. It'll sink your ship quicker than, than you believe. And then you go, you go up on a, uh, to testify on an assumption. You're oh. in trouble. You're in trouble. <laughs> Hold on to your butts. It's going to be a ride. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, one thing to also talk about with ready response, which really makes it so unique to the industry. Also, is we've got the ability to do what we would call like very similar to like an Amber Alert we can alert everybody on our network for some kind of event or some kind of circumstance. But more importantly than that is let's say you had somebody who tweeted about something and they're, you know, in New York city and they're heading back to JFK and don't come back to Florida, you know, well, by the time they land in Florida, we've got an investigator down there knocking on their door. That's how powerful this is. Yeah. No, it's, it's good stuff. It's a good network. It's uh you know, the it, technology is so amazing and it's yes. only getting better and better. Right. So our ability to do these things yes. and, and work together uh, to, to, to make sure, you know, we figure out what's going on as a team. Right. And, and essentially that's what it is. You know, you're, you're creating a web and network uh, of, of team members. You know? Absolutely. And that's why merging these technologies with an insurance product has never been done in the industry yeah. anywhere. Exactly. We've talked about they've always been standalone separate and see here, here's the other beauty about it that insurance product if you take and buy that insurance product that discount insurance product you get all our technologies as part of the package right it has never ever been done before yeah so you get the total risk management solution right there combined together that's what we're so excited about. Yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer if you, if you live in that space. I mean, why would you not want that? And yes. Sense. And you know, we as investigators, you know, all right, well, how do we how do we tag on to that? <laughs> you know, how do we make that my bottom line here? This is a great thing that Kevin's uh, you know, putting out here, but what does that mean for my business? You know, how how can I capitalize on that? Well, there's a way to do it, right? Join up. Part of that network. So Yep, yep, join up. Because we, we need them all over the place. We need investigators all over. I mean, even though you have, you know, a core base of 500, uh, if you start thinking about this, um, you're going to have needs all the time of different types of things. And if somebody's tied up on something else, you need someone else. Yeah. Just give them that opportunities. And here's the other thing too, Matt, is sometimes a small guy has a lot of good contacts. They've got a reason now to go back to those contacts, even though they're a small guy. And say, hey, I'm part of this big network now. And we're offering these different products. Guess what? All of a sudden, they've just developed new business yeah. for themselves. And that's the thing. Like it, the interesting part about this industry is, it, you're right about one thing, right? It, it, it doesn't matter if you're a big shop or a small shop. You know, seventy five percent of what we do is based upon relationships. Yes. You know, it's who do you know? You know, because we're in the information business, right? So there's this skill set of, all right, I got to do my research and I got to pull this information and knowing where to look for it, all important stuff. I don't want to undersell it, but right. I believe 75% of it is my relationship with this, you know, po police organization or, you know, this person that I know, you know, who, who is a, in, in politics or, right. you know, or, or this person who's a doctor uh, and knows a certain terminology can point in the right direction. Like your own personal relationships yes. really determine how good you are at what you do. So like, if you're an intro introvert, it's not a good business for you to be in, <laughs> you know, no, no. <laughs> you're going to be a crappy, you'll be probably good at surveillance. If you're an introvert, you'll probably be amazing at surveillance. Sure. Uh, but, sure. but networking and doing all that stuff, hmm, you may want to find another career, <laughs> you know. If you think about it, we, we probably, you know, even that uh, I could get boots on the ground literally anywhere in the country, you know, within 24 hours, no problem. Yeah, but we, we wanted to speed up that process by doing the technology, you know, components so now we can really get people out there. 
you know, quicker turnaround time. And like I say, uh, if they accept an assignment, you know, when it's going out to do the actual investigation, you know, it's a minimum of eight hours they're going to get paid, yeah. which once again, unheard of in our industry. So I truly want this to be something to help that little small one shop person that they can now compete with the big guys. Yeah. You know, and they can now all of a sudden be just like everybody else because we have did the heavy lifting. Yeah. We've, we've built the relationships to be able to bring something like what we're doing right now that's unheard of in the industry. Now we need investigators to be part of that, you know, to help yeah. us. Yeah, I had a, actually had a, a trucking case down in Alabama um, last year mm-hmm. that uh, I think it was through NCISS or Telnet. I, I ended up finding somebody down there. And it was it was a lot. It took me a bit to get it rolling. I sure. mean, the guy who did it was amazing. He did a great job and he got me exactly what I needed. He was able to track down the, you know, we found where the vehicle, the truck was being stored and it was a question of a design defect on a tire and we found the tire in question and he he shipped the tire up to new york and it's literally sitting in this big huge box in this attorney's office uh a guy who i share office space with and i'm like i see the tire every time i go in i'm like when you <laughs> the put tire eventually we have the jury more likely you know yeah when are you putting this thing in storage <laughs> i can look at this all, every time i come in yeah um but yeah so the 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 benefits of networking and things like that like i would have never been able to handle like alabama where do you where do you start where do you begin uh, right. and it did it took a bit of you know working the message boards to find the right person sure. uh, whereas you know if you're in this network now you know it's pretty amazing that, that you'd be able to tap into people that this is what they do they're they're experts um and doing this this type of uh of work so it's amazing so we're going to wind down here why don't you tell everybody how they can get a hold of you how they can get the app if they have any more questions um you know uh, how you can answer them sure um so my email address you can go to mclean pi which is all lowercase m c c l a i n p is and paul eyes and ivan at gmail.com uh you can go to ready response which is www r-e-a-d-i response.com you can go to the little tab called join us and you can submit in your information there you want to call me you can call me toll free at 877-532-1152 and i'll be glad to answer any questions i can we're really excited and we want to get as many qualified professional investigators out there because i really feel strongly this is going to increase their bottom line maybe even expand their agencies because we start thinking about how many potential possible clients could be out there in this space. And once we get it out there, I know there's going to be other ones. I've, I've already got calls and meetings. I have lined up adjusters who want to partner up with us. And we've got risk management companies who are wanting to combine with us. I've heard about this. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities for everybody. That's, great, That's what I'm excited about because we're happy for you. Just, uh, you know, it's not just about me or my agency. I want, because like I say, I can't do it all. There's no way I can do it all. I need good people all over the country, you know, and like I say, being down at Nally is going to be a great time to network and talk to people. And I'm going to break some bread with you and Kelly, yeah, definitely. you know, a few yeah. other folks down there. So I'm really excited about that. Yeah, we will be some barbecue, maybe some Mexican. You know, there I, you, you know, there's a food festival actually that's going on the week that we're going to be there. <laughs> I'm like, timing, right? <laughs> I'm going to be gaining some weight in Texas. <laughs> like, I know it's inevitable. <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. All right, well, we can't end the show without having like a proper radio sign off. So <laughs> I think you need to sign us off here in your beautiful radio voice. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> Hey, this is Wayne McLean, been live on PI Perspective and with Matt Spare, and we'll be seeing you real soon. Awesome. Thank you, Kevin. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, if you're listening on Memorial Day, go have a hamburger. Uh, you salute the flag and uh, all that good stuff, and we'll, we'll catch you guys on the next show. Take care. Now, this was a fun show, and I like that radio voice. Please make sure you check out the Ready Response app and consider joining the network. We want to thank the great folks at Nally for putting this event together. We also want to thank Crosstracks, Merlin Locate, PI Institute of Education, and Scope Now for sponsoring this show. So please support these great sponsors of ours. Speaking of, have you checked out investigatorstoolbox.com yet? You can join through the app available on iOS and Android platforms. You'll be able to access the whole site 
right from your smartphone. And there's no better time than today to sign up for the site. Just 49 cents a day gets you great networking, training, and data resource management. And if you use code PIP201836, you'll save an extra $20. And if you have a question or a comment about the show, email Matt at MatthewS at SatellitePI.com. You can also find him on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook. We'd like your feedback to bring you the best shows possible. And we'll be back on Monday with a new show. Make sure you tune in and stay safe out there.